Hi, so uh, I'm going to talk about the Spanish Inquisition. Um, so yeah, let's get it started. So the Spanish Inquisition, you can generally say it went from 1478 to uh, 1834. So quite a long time, over, over 200 years. So quite a long time. It was in theory a, a judicial institution aimed to combat heresy in in Spain. It started in Spain. But in reality it was really like especially at first an attempt to consolidate uh, the the royal power. And it was famously achieved through brutal, brutal means. Well, I am going to just do a little sum up. Well I already said the time period from 1478 to 1834. It was especially, it was in Spain, Portugal, but it was famously in Aragon, Granada, Seville, and Valencia. I may pronounce things differently, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the context, uh, anti-Semitism, Inquisition, war, and key people, I, I'm Spanish, and I'm going to pronounce them in a Spanish accent, so sorry about that if you don't like it. But Tomaso Campanella, Bartolomé de Caren, Caranza, Charles V, Ferdinand II, Ferdinand VII, Francisco Jiménez de Cisneros, John III of Portugal, Pope uh, Sixtus IV, and Tomaso Torquemeda. Related topics would be Auto la fe, Christianity, heresy, Marrano, can get into that later, don't worry, and Judaism. So overall, 32,000 individuals were executed during the whole Spanish Inquisition, although it was not limited to Spain, FYI. Like, it managed to spread in the early 1500s to North Africa and the Spanish colonies, in the New World, so Central South America. And by in the 1500s and 1600s, attendance at each trial were as high as bullfighting. Like, you, you could go to a bullfight and it would be packed. You could also go to a trial and it would still be packed. Well, there was so this whole Spanish Inquisition actually kind of started before, in the 13th century. It was based on the medieval Inquisition back then, which did play a significant role in Spain. And way, way before 711, I mentioned this in another video I did, the Moors had um, invaded the Iberian Peninsula. But then by late 1400s, the Spanish, well, the Spanish, the Catholics had managed to reconquer, la reconquista, the land and establish their own reign. So, yeah. By this point, um, there was quite a, like, the more population had been expelled from Spain and the Jewish became the next big religious population apart from the Christians. Therefore, um, they became the target for, for Spanish Christians. By this point, Protestantism was not a thing. So, yeah. well, the Jewish community in the like early Reconquista, even before the actual Reconquista had finished, had flourished and grown despite anti-Semitism resurfacing. I still don't get why the Jews are, are prosecuted as much as they are. What have they done? Like, I'm not really into religion, but I don't get the prosecution of the Jews. What have they done? Like, many years ago, the Conquista, even then in the Holocaust, even before the Reconquista, it's just, I don't, I don't know. What, what did they do? Well, Henry III of Castile and Leon, who has reigned from 1390 to 
1406, prosecuted and um, pushed the conversion to Christianity by the Jews. This was the first case of, the like, first real, real significant case of religious prosecution and conversion. So the medieval inquisitions that I talked about before, they were not to this extent. They were not religiously based as much, if that makes any sense. Well, the programs of 1391 threatened violence as they they could choose between baptism or death. So instead of dying, they would convert. They would become converts, or in Spanish, conversos. Um, Marranos, they were nominal converts who rejected forced conversion, and instead of instead of practicing, they couldn't practice open Judaism because it would be expelled or killed. So, they converted and continued practicing Ju uh, Judaism in secret. This is called uh, Falsus Conversus. They're quite, quite famous. Uh, Ferdinand and Isabella, the Catholic monarchs, they, they got married in 1469, therefore uniting uh, Castile and Aragon. And especially denouncing the dangers the, Maran the Maranos posed, which I still don't get. I mean, yeah, by that point, religion was a really huge, significant part of life. But I still don't get the whole religious prosecution. It's religion. You can't prove anything. I don't, I don't know. Well, they saw the use of inquisition, basically to support their regime and especially to increase royal power, especially in Aragon. Castile and Leon, Isabella's part, had been the most powerful kingdom. Aragon still was really powerful, but it was looking to expand the, the power. So the first inquisition, the first Spanish inquisitors were in Seville, Sevilla, in the south of Spain. And they were so extreme, the Pope was just like, by the way, Pope Sixtus IV. The Pope was like, hey, mm, can, can you stop? I don't, I don't like this. It's, it's too, too crazy. I, I don't know. Yeah, but he was not successful. They, they kept on going. This is around 1478. When he, when the Pope had actually issued a rule authorizing the Catholic monarchs to name inquisitors to promote this. So, 1478, the official start of the Spanish Inquisition, it got out of his hands. By 1483, there was an authorization for the naming of a Grand Inquisitor, in Spanish, Inquisitor General. And more places like Aragon, Valencia, Valencia, and Catal Catalonia, Catalonia were placed under the power of the Inquisition. So, the Grand Inquisitor uh, was the head of the Inquisition and had ecclesiastical, uh, ecclesiastical jurisdiction from the Vatican, which obviously gave him religious power. This Grand Inquisitor was assisted by a council of five and also other other consultors. It wasn't just him. It wasn't this guy who said, oh, you're going to get killed. Oh, you're going to get converted. No, it was a bunch of people, but he was the, the guy with the most power. It's like, if you think about it in terms of Today's United States Supreme Court, and I'm sure it's the same in any other Supreme Court. There's the Chief Justice and then the Associate Justices. So the Chief Justice is the main guy, but the Associate Justices are, they help him. Now, Philip II reigned from 1556 to 1598. 
always thought he'd range from 1558, but that's not. Here it says 1556 to 1598, so we're taking that. He basically put the control of his Inquisition Council into the, um, into the hands of civil power. So now civil power basically had the control of the Inquisition and the whole council. Under Pope Clement the, the, the Seventh, popes and bishops were, were allowed to be put under trial. So not even, not even popes and bishops were, were safe. If they were suspected of heresy, they could be put under trial. Um, so, okay. Dominican Tomás de Torquemeda, he was the first Grand Inquisitor, and he was brutal and fanatic. He was the, um, the, the guy who basically promoted the whole, oh, the Spanish Inquisition is so brutal, so terrible. It was, but he was the first guy, and basically, the guy who said the tone. Sorry. So, Torquemeda, he used torture and used confiscation. And the sentencing of the Spanish Inquisition took place in Auto da Fe, which is uh, Portuguese for Act of Faith. I suspect this name would, was given later on when the Spanish Inquisition spread to Portugal. Portugal, I mean, it is also in the Iberian Peninsula, so you can, you can imagine how it spread so easily. And also then to the colonies, who were Spanish colonies, and then to, to Italy, who were not that far from Spain. So it, it was kind of in a bubble, you know, like it was, it did not go all around the world. It originated in Spain, hence Spanish Inquisition, but then also spread to Spanish colonies, Northern Africa, which is like right next to Spain, Italy. Yeah. Well, um, these proceedings were pre presented before a court and a crowd, like trials, but they had members of the public, sometimes even royalty, and it was kind of a whole festive activity. So if you were bored at home, you were with your wife and your kids, and the wife's like, what do we do? The kids are being the kids are being a pain. Where do we take them? And you're like, hey, there's an Inquisition trial going on. Let's go and drink and have some fun there. I don't, I don't know if they could do that. But let's go and watch that. Today's sim could be drinking and having fun. I don't know if that's what they did back then. So, but yeah, it was basically a whole festive activity. Um, there was burning at the stake. As you can probably guess, and apparently, yeah, two thousand people were burned at the stake, and the reason I'm like oh, apparently oh, is because this is a lot of propaganda. Um, Protestant critics exaggerated this, like, oh, they killed two thousand people at the stake. How brutal! It wasn't that. I don't think it was that many. I mean, overall, thirty-two thousand people died in the um, in the whole Inquisition. But burning at the stake was not the main. Even though it is promoted to be the main um, way of execution, it was not the main one. It was a significant one, but not the main the main attraction, if if you will. Well. On March 31st of 1492, Isabella and Ferdinand, uh, they e issued this, um, this edict, or, yeah, edict, giving the Jews a choice. They're like, hey, we know how before you were given the choice to, to like, convert and to either convert or go in exile. Now you actually have to choose. You can't just um, escape this. You can't become false converts. You, you're gonna have to um, to choose, and that's what they, they did. 
So 160,000 Jews were expelled under the urging of Torquemada. Torquemada, he was brutal. Yeah. Francisco Cardenal Jiménez de Cisneros, he, it's a long name, Francisco Cardenal Jiménez de Cisneros. Not an easy name to pronounce if you were not Spanish. I say that three times fast, am I right? Francisco Cardenal Jiménez Cisneros. Francisco Cardenal Jiménez Cisneros. It's a long name. Well, he promoted the suppression of Muslims. I mean, Muslims were not a friend. We're not friends of the Christians. As you can probably tell by this point. Well, in 1502, he ordered the, pros the proscription of Islam in Granada. Granada, coincidentally, being the last of the Muslim kingdoms to fall to the Catholics or the Christians by this point. Um, yeah. It fell on the 2nd of January 1492. I don't know why I know the exact date. But I was taught this in like five years ago, and I still remember this. And I don't know why, because when I when I was first taught this topic, I hated it. Now I like it, but back then it was horrible. But I still remember it was the second of January, like around twelve p.m. when they gave the um, Catholic kings the the key. To the city, because back then they had keys to the city. So that was when they surrendered Granada. And well, uh, Jimenez, he was named Grand Inquis Inquisitor, Inquisitor in 1507, after, I am guessing, um, Torquemada's death. And like he continued prosecuting Muslims. <laughs> In 1526, there was even f further forced con uh, conversions in Valencia and Aragon, and Islam was, was just banned. Like, like, I don't get the prosecution. Like, what do they do? You just believe in something you don't? It just makes no sense. Well, m Moriscos, um, they were Spanish Muslims, and the whole Morisco culture was banned by Philip II in 1566, just 10 years into his, his reign. Um, the Mor uh, like Mor Moriscos and the Spanish crown basically got into open warfare a bit before, no, a, bit, a bit after, I'm sorry, by 1569, I have 1539 written down, so that's wrong. By 1569, it was op basically open warfare. It wasn't. They, they didn't go onto the streets like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna try to convert me?" No, no. It was religious warfare, not crusades. I don't know how to explain it, but it was kind of open warfare, but not really. Basically, I mean, by this point, the Muslims were kind of losing, and you can you can guess why because. Christians were on the throne, so they had the power to expel. So they expelled these these from Moriscos in, from Granada in 1571, and then by 1614, I don't remember who is who was king then, but by 1614, way after Philip died, over 300,000 um, Moriscos were expelled from Spain. 300,000, 300,000 from the entirety of Spain. <laughs> well, but as you know, I mean, 1530s, the whole Reformation started, especially in England, and it spread throughout Europe, and then when it finally reached Spain, you'd think, Protestants would burn. I mean, Mary the First burned 300 Protestants. Imagine what it would have been like in Spain, right? And they did get prosecuted, but not, not nearly as hard as the Muslims and Jews. I think, and I may be wrong, this is not backed up by anything I've read, but my personal opinion is because they were, they were Christian. So, they weren't they weren't prosecuted as much. They were still prosecuted, but yeah. 
However, other foreign um, Protestants who were suspected of promoting uh, said Protestantism in Spain, they did meet violent ends. So if you were a Spanish Protestant, you were kind of fine as long as you didn't advertise it. But if you wanted to spread Protestantism, you were screwed. They give you coming from from somewhere else. Well, Roman Catholics uh, then became the um, the main focus of the Spanish Inquisition. And here's where I got confused because I generally thought. Spanish moderns were Roman Catholic. I don't, I haven't really found an explanation for this. I am guessing it was Roman Catholics who were suspected of heresy rather than because of their religion. I don't know, it was mainly prominent Roman Catholics. It's not like if you were a Roman Catholic, they would just pick you off the street. So I'm guessing it's because of a suspected heresy. Well, St. Ignatius of Loyola and Archbishop of Toledo and Dominican Bartolomé de Caranza, um, who was in prison for 17 years, were amongst those prominent Roman Catholics persecuted because of this. Again, the whole Roman Catholic thing threw me off, but who knows. Well, I mean... Yeah, people who people who were unorthodox followers of the whole Alumbrado movement, followers of Erasmianism based on humanist let me pronounce this right. Desiderius Erasmus, I probably butchered that, but hey. Um they faced prosecution, especially in the fifteen and sixteen hundreds. So quite quite the prosecution. Well, overall, there were around 14 tribunals of the um, Inquisition in Spain, and there were other brutal ones in Mexico and Peru. There were many more on other colonies, but the most brutal ones being there. Like I said, it managed to spread to other countries and other places, like Sicily in 1517, but didn't manage to spread to Naples and Milan. So yeah, it did spread to Sicily, but not 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 fully in Italy. Uh, Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. And I always get this wrong. I always get the order wrong. Charles V. Wait, Charles V. Like Roman Emperor Charles V, King of Spain is Charles I. Yes, 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 yes. So he was Charles I of Spain, fifth of. Germany, as they say in Spain, uh, Holy Roman Emperor, he failed to introduce it into the Low Countries, which, fun fact, I did not know that was a name in English. I always called it in Spanish, Países Bajos. That's a new thing I learned, you know, every day discovering something brand new. Well, yeah, like I mentioned before, it did also spread to Portugal. For example, John III of Portugal, with permission of the, po the Pope, called the, the Third. And here's where it gets confusing because, you know, the Pope, Roman Catholic, and then he also prosecuted Roman Catholics. Makes no sense. Anyway, um, he introduced a tribunal against the Jews in 1536. And by this point, it was persecution of the Jews, which I don't understand, but I kind of get. But why prosecution of Roman Catholics? Why? Well, John set up this tribunal, uh, prosecution of the Jews, 1536, and however, this this grant was revoked later on because it was too brutal, and the Inquisition was actually established in 1547, which I. In those dates, if you know anything about Henry the Seventh, the Hen Henry the Eighth of England, should ring a bell. It has nothing to do with this, but still. Well, the, these autos da fe, which I explained earlier, were quite common in Spain in the seventeen hundreds, but they were not nearly as harsh as they, as they had been in the fifteen and sixteen hundreds, 
nowhere near as harsh. Oh, fun fact, Inquisition actually helped shield Spain and Spanish people from the famous witchcraft, uh, witchcraft trials going on during this period, so in the 1600s, so that's a kind of win. I mean, many who would have been killed because of witchcraft were killed in the Inquisition, but hey, that's a win for Spain. <laughs> Well, this is this is where it gets really funny, and I know I've said this before, but it's just, it's just really funny. Uh, Joseph Bonaparte, in eighteen oh eight, suppressed the Inquisition. Ferdinand the Seventh reestablished it in eighteen fourteen. It was then suppressed in eighteen twenty. It was then restored in eighteen twenty three. It was then repressed, suppressed in eighteen thirty four. And that's where it stopped. But it's kind of crazy thinking that two years ago, like, not two years, 200 years ago, the, pro the, the Inquisition was still in place. I always thought it was like something of 700 years ago. No, no, no. 200 years ago, there was still a Spanish Inquisition in Spain. In Portugal, it died out in 1821. That's it. So, it, I mean, when I was little, uh, I mean, I live in Spain, and I was always told the Spanish Inquisition was this, like, crazy prosecution of those who were not Catholic. I mean, it was, but I always imagined it to be much more brutal than it actually was. I'm not saying it wasn't brutal, but I don't know. I never expected it to be so, like, a trial. I I've always pictured it in my head as a kid of, like, people being dragged out of their houses, tied to a stake, and burned. I mean, it's more interesting and more complicated this way, but, I don't know, my imagination was quite dark as a child, so you can put it to that. And yeah, anyway, that's the Spanish Inquisition. Quite, quite brutal, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. They did, in fact, issue warnings on the Spanish Inquisition, like I said. It's not like people did expect the Spanish Inquisition. So if you notice the thumbnail of this video is the Monty Python sketch, they, they burst in the say. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! But they did. They received ample warning. So it's kind of funnier that way, the other way though. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. I don't think I have much to say. So yeah, thank you for watching.